we're gonna go with love and sex in the white tower did amazon get it right did they improve it did they make it work were they right on the dot let's talk about it we're gonna talk all things relational conjugal in the wheel of time where should we start i think one of the most controversial issues is just the whole notion of pillow friends we've had this talk conversation many times about how uh, dated and childish that phrase seems to be and how you know robert jordan might have taken that subject a little too lightly but let, let, let's just uh, i want to open the discussion up with pillow friends and then we'll we'll go further uh robert jordan did a lot of gay because of proximity type stuff and that wasn't cool out of the gay relationships and specifically there's only the one male one and i'm pretty sure brandon sanderson kind of put that in um with tom Inns. uh but the all of the even not even strictly gay just queer uh female relationships are all like because of proximity and just because they were just you know they had the, the, the they couldn't leave and stuff like that so suan and maureen as soon as they left they all they both went immediately right to men again when when there was a lot of good opportunity there to like have a nice relationship with the two of them especially in new spring like yeah they're gonna get a new spring yeah that a lot. there was a lot of really good parts in new spring they're getting fitted for the dress like the way they were looking at each other it was just like if they would have said two more words like it, uh. they they could have really played into that uh, romantic feelings that they had for each other, but they they opted for. I mean, he opted for more of a. Uh, I don't even want to say friendly, but like completely platonic way that they looked at each other. R- Risa, I, what do you think about Amazon's like full on board? Maureen and Suan are in like a relationship, and it seems to be like a healthy relationship other than the fact that they see each other you know once every time maureen ends up back at the tower but you know they're trying to save the world so that makes sense uh, but how do yeah, you feel about I, them um, putting them together like like officially uh i feel like there's a, a large part of the fandom that's just like oh yes finally <laughs> thank you <laughs> we've been edging this whole time as soon as, as, soon as you want on your knees that's that's when it happened seriously how sexy was that what episode was that in forgive me Five, four, or five. five. Yeah, well, no, nothing good in episode five. <laughs> How do we four? <laughs> Probably four. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> and again, that um, that kind of glossed over the power dynamics that does exist in this situation, and that later on was brought up when she had to exile Moraine. She didn't want to do it. She also finally got to see her after so long. Whoever knows how many, it could have been years at that point that the last right. time she was back. I don't remember if they said exactly how long. Yeah. But we do get the uh, the uh, concept that it needed to be hidden. It was a very hush hush thing. Um, well, not I think only they their were, friendship, they were but their love, right? It, 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 I don't think they were keeping it hush hush because of the relationship. They were just wanting to keep, like, in the fact, like that they shouldn't be in a relationship, but they wanted to use the fact that people thought they hated each other to like be better at spying and like you know stuff like that. I think it's pretty obvious that Amazon is improving this whole aspect yeah. of the story without taking away from the main themes. I think right. Robert Jordan had an opportunity to create one of the greatest love story story time with Swan and Moraine. They are literally forsaking their love to save the world on a 20 year mission. Yeah. Oh, if Robert I'm Jordan sure could have given it man. the due respect it deserves, he could have given us uh, just one of the most epic love stories. And I do believe that will time is going to give us that. That's kind of my take. I hope uh, and everything from the casual uh, polyamory uh, from the fireside scene, the green and her two orders. And I really hope that it, it appeals to more people in that more people will feel included by watching the show. That scene alone with Swan and Moraine was arguably better than any relationship that Robert Jordan wrote in this book. I would say the best relationship in Wheel of Time is Andrew and Pavara, and that was written yes. by Brandon Sanderson. Right in the beginning of the first episode, when the women's circle was like walking out to braid Egwene's hair, the little bit of backstory that they gave to uh, the braid of the hair, where it was where Naini was like, you know, all the women took turns braiding the hair, and then Naini was like, um, if you're ever feeling scared or alone or uh, you know whatever, you know, if you feel this braid you can you'll know all of the women who braided your hair and all of the women that came before them are there with you and you can draw strength on them or whatever you know that that was kind of a line and 
for the our book for the book readers, I feel like that gave so much interesting depth to the um to to Nynaeve's braid tugging throughout the entire series, where kind of in the books it felt more like a security blanket that she kind of used. Yes. Yes. But like if you head canon the thing that show Nyanie have said, I, 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 it gives it so much more depth and meaning, and I just really like. To that end, before we get Terry forward, everyone, let's give uh, the North Harbor Podcast May the Leaf bump. Get on there, subscribe to their channel, go to their Patreon, give, 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 love, love, love. They're amazing women who have been doing this. They're on episode 69, everyone. They've only shown the Wheel of Time with their own link tree. Reese, what, is, what are you excited for for season two? I, I'm really, I've really been enjoying and I wanted to make a list, but I didn't. But of all the things that people have said, season two or rewrite it, because I think that's really great. Like everybody's just been saying, this better be in season two or rewrite. It and like we gotta have a list so we know when to riot. Uh, I really, I really hope that Aludra's in it. I'm biased. Ooh, I know. Yeah. I really hope she's in it. Oh man, that would that's, that would be that's awesome. My or I riot. Yeah, that's a great cosplay. I remember. I as soon as you said it, I was like, I remember. And then I was like, Oh yeah. I saw so, that in the Jordan Con page. Um, great yeah. art. That's, that's a lot of work right there. Congratulations. Nice All right, you did just get voted the hottest eliminator ever. Yeah, we we got into the you know the the channeling sex. We got into the polyamory. We got it. We we I think we've covered it all. There's really not much. He basically exoticized sex. Uh, any culture that was uh, overtly sexual or, or openly uh, sexual, they were super exotic and weird and uh, to be looked at, uh, upon askance. And, oh my God! Look, look at those people with no clothes on. Jesus Christ! Like the POVs of uh, of people observing that uh, always was like in shock and awe. Uh, well, so, Ryan, that's a very good point. Is that a lot of the POVs that we have primarily are from a conservative point of view? Societies sent, tend to be more progressive and open than a lot of the POVs that we see. So when Nynaeve walks into uh, Era Daman and she's like, oh, geez, look at all these sheer dresses, or, or when um, Perrin is walking around during that festival. You know, we're we're seeing it from like a puritanical p- point yeah. of view, or it's a POV of like a forsaken who's using sex and sexuality as a tool of coercion and, and dominance, and and just basically like again like making it a, a exoticized, uh, uh, weird, uh, uh, open to corruption, and not like a pure wholesome thing. <laughs> Having seen the inside of the uh, editing and publishing world a little bit as well, I, I, I really wonder how much of it was Tor also. Because Tom Doherty was, I mean, you know, he's still alive, actually, I think. I think he's like close to 90 now or, or over 90. So he was pretty old. Even when they when the books were coming out, he was in the 70s when the, when the books were coming out. So like, I wonder how much influence you know that that had because w- w- especially even just within the wheel of time like um michael Livingston spoke about in an interview uh how the big white book of bad art there's um the the world map that's in that uh he found notes from robert jordan that he would set to the publisher like here are some changes that i want you to make and then they would just ignore them and not change them so i i wonder how much it was on the publisher side and how much was on Robert. Schreier. I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll never know that, but like it, yeah. I, it, it's, it's a food for thought kind of thing. Cause uh, having, like I said, having done the guest services stuff and dealt with publishers and editors and authors, um, I know they there's a lot of, th- there's a lot of influence they have and they, you know, they will say you have to change this or you have to, you know, that has to change or this oh. storyline has to go this way. And, and, the authors pretty much have to do it in some cases. I want I want the two rivers to just seem like uh, d- d- pilgrims off the Mayflower or whatever. No, like, like you say, like if you're nervous, just imagine everyone in the audience naked. Well, imagine the the host naked. Yeah, Tom, make her feel better. You want to get, <laughs> you want to get banned from YouTube? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> It's all good. Do you um, want to promote your show for a second? Yeah. yeah him, tell us, tell us what your show entails. Okay. So our show, we um, we are a podcast. We read The Wheel of Time. We, um, we started from the back of the series. We're taking it from the rear. 
Whoa. Oh, and, oh, uh, whoa. Awesome. Drink to that. We uh, we simply go through and um, point out all of the uh, the lovely innuendos that were left for us throughout the uh, throughout the books, okay. throughout the pages. They're really, really blatantly obvious. So. Do, do you have a running count on all of the uh, things that have been fingered in the on the pages of the Wheel of Time? <laughs> we do not. Okay. No, we that's math. So that many is things. a lot of math. That is so all that's a lot of math. I can't count that high. So, yeah, so you guys decided to go backwards. You're doing Memory of Light, then going backwards. That's a great idea. So you have 69 yep. episodes just on the Memory of Light. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are going to be doing this until you're 70 years old? That's the plan, yeah. But you That's won't notice great. it because I said I agelessness. So it'll be great. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs>